So backups and disaster recovery planning, hugely important, obviously, because computers fail, things break, things go wrong. Uh, we're going to talk about how to do really simple, not HA failover as in having a lot of whole cluster of these things. HA is nice. Uh, there's plenty of documentation on it, but it does require three or more servers to be done properly. And I know someone's screaming, but did you hear about HA Lizard? Yes, I don't really like this as a solution myself. I played around a little bit with it. Um, it just overly complicates things. And I'm leaving a link and showing this uh, discussion, which I'll leave a link below as well. People come up with some very more complicated ways to do it. Uh, this is something that Oliver Lambert, he is one of the developers at both XCPNG and Zen Orchestra. You can do a Zen Orchestra disaster recovery or continuous replication feature to copy a VM every XX minutes uh, to another server. And that's what we're going to show is how it's really simple to do this without getting overly complex. Now, I know this is not an automated method where as soon as one server re readily grabs and picks up over there, but if your budget doesn't allow for a really nice high availability setup, rigging one together is more likely to cause you an overcomplicated mess of trouble. Doesn't mean you, you shouldn't be playing with it. I'm just saying you maybe shouldn't rely on it uh, because it can be very messy trying to do HA with some of the other tools. But this is a nice solution. And generally speaking, if a server goes down, one, if it's your server, you're usually aware. Two, if it's a client server, they will let you know and make you aware. And with this solution, other than having to click a button, it is a good solution that is easy to deploy. So we're going to cover real quick the setup. So we have two servers, Center for One, Center for Two. Both of them have their own local storage. And so we're going to be using a VM we refer to as YouTube demo running on uh, Zenifer. We're going to replicate it over here to Center for Two. The idea of replication is it will replicate only the differential changes between the replication times. So whatever changed on it, it'll go over here and we have a copy that is only that old on there. If we set it to hourly, we'll never lose more than one hour of data on that particular VM. So pretty simple system. And if this goes down completely, no worries, it's gonna be backed up on here. Now, for people who know, yes, I know I have more on my network. This isn't necessarily a schema that we use. But this is a schema we have set up even for some of the clients that simply just have two Zen servers and we just replicate the VMs over to another Zen server. So there's two copies of the backup. And yes, I do know I use things like SolarWinds for file and incremental backup, of which are much better at doing differentials than trying to back up an entire virtual machine because virtual machines look at things at the hard drive level. So it's backing up everything, not necessarily one little tiny file change that may have occurred on there. So just something to consider when you're doing that, but we're gonna talk through the scenarios and how it works. So once again, this is a Zen Orchestra 533 Community Edition. If you're doing this in production, please consider purchasing the full version of Zen Orchestra. Uh, but the backup NG is supported not in the free edition, but in the one you compile yourself. And Zen Server 7.6. So both of these are current as of January 2019. So we go over here and we make a backup. And we're, I just called this one demo. You choose continuous replication. Now. I have an entire more in-depth video on Backup NG and all of its amazing features. We're only going to cover the continuous replication today, but yes, it supports a lot of different uh, disaster recovery options, Delta backups, and everything else. I have another explainer video uh, that spends some time talking about that. But when you do continuous replication, it will allow it to easily replicate to any other server that Zen Orchestra has in the server list. They do not have to be in a pool together. They can be two independent servers with their own separate passwords and things like that. Zen Orchestra is orchestrating the communication between them and allowing the continuous replication to happen. So we have demo, continuous replication. We are gonna choose the YouTube demo VM. And YouTube demo VM, it's currently living on Zenifer. The destination is Zenifer 2, local storage. So Zenifer 2 local storage, currently it lives on Zenifer's local storage. Like I said, there's not a prerequisite that these have any shared storage. They do, but this that's out of scope of this talk. So we hit create and we did we didn't have this uh, backup demo created and then you'd have to add a schedule to it. Uh, you wanted to do it like every day, maybe every hour or maybe just business hours for whenever the client or is open or whenever you know the most changes are happening. Because if there's fewer changes happening, not a big deal. You don't need to back it up as often because it's not much to back up. Now, how fast will that backup occur? This is going to be greatly dependent on your hardware and the amount of change in that VM between the backup schedules. 
So I've been running this manually a few times, so there was some data so we can look at it. So last time it ran was 1021.43. It's currently 1042. So we had a 74 megs of data. So this is what it looks like when it does it. It's going to go ahead and do a snapshot, uh, start, end, and it copies it over to Zender for two, start, end, duration, a few seconds, size, copy it over 74 megs. So we'll go ahead and just run this again and see what it copies over. And you can see this goes relatively fast. And these servers are a couple Dell R710 older servers, nothing really high end here. So if you do have some higher end hardware, it is going to go a lot faster. If you have 10 gig links between them or faster, it's going to go faster again, as opposed to this is just working over the one gig links. Successful. Um, there's apparently only 18 megs of data between the changes. Fair enough. So it doesn't take long. And how does that look? So let's go over here to back to the VMs. And this is over on Zener for two. So we look at the disk. We have a shared system. That's why it says it's here and it's not running. So it's not showing what it's on. But you can see that right here, Zener for two local storage. Here's the YouTube backup demo. And it puts a little date in there for each of the replications. Go back to here, demo, snapshot. And here's the snapshot it takes that it copies over. So first thing it does, takes a snapshot. Next thing it does, it sends the data over and across there. So Pretty straightforward. What if we wanted to start this? Well, first problem is if we start, you can force it to start, but it's going to warn you forbidden operation. The operation for this VM is blocked. Why is it blocked? Because we don't want it to automatically start um, while the other one's running. And it's not aware that the other one's running. So let's go ahead and shut the other one off. We'll shut it down. So if we're over here and we start it again, Still, once again, we can do that, but we really want to do is start a copy of it. And the reason you start a copy is because you want to test it. I want to see if that's, you know, actually working properly. So we can say start a copy and it will quickly clone and copy it. And we can say, yep, I can verify that my backups are working um, and everything's good. Now, especially if you have these set to static IP addresses, this is why you don't want them running both at the same time. And this is kind of the manual process of it. But in the case of, let's say Xenifer dies completely, we know that this is the last timestamp that we have a backup and we can either force start this one or we can clone this one again. But if you go through the start process and you do a force start, you will break the ability if Center was still online to do the continuous replication, you'll have to start up basically a new one because it won't understand how to sync it because you've now changed the backup and it does rely on the backup not being changed. So once you do this, it would have to build a new one for the continuous replication. No big deal there. Now. Let's go back over to the overview and show what happens when there's a little bit more data that's in there. So when we ran this, it was only a few seconds because, well, the VM's not doing much. So we're going to go ahead and pull that over here. All right, we started the VM back up and we're logged into it. So let's go ahead and create a file. So one, uh, touch, I'm dot. So we just added some blank file, which obviously doesn't add much data. So we got this file on here. We'll do a speed test real quick. Now I'll show you what the speed test does in just a second here. Now the speed test just went and created, so we can't speed test, um, a simple two gigabyte file uh, and then deletes it. So it just goes ahead and dumps some zeros into a file, creates it and then deletes the file. So we actually didn't truly add anything, but from the block storage standpoint, there are two gigs worth of changes that have occurred. And I added that little file called tom.txt. So we'll go back over here to backup ng. And we've seen the last one was at 1042. It's been five minutes, so it should run again. And I say should. One of the things that you need to know when this is running is this can happen. And it's going to have to wait a second. Job canceled to protect VDI chain. There's an excellent article here because in case you're testing, you run into this. I'm glad they linked it right into the error message so you don't have to go hunting down with the weird... Uh, message means, but essentially it's all about coalescence and making sure that the merge happened after the snapshot, because we, when we do a snapshot, it deletes one and creates the other. So we did run it too fast, which will cause that. I'll go ahead and kick it off again. It seems on my system or this particular system at the speed it coalesces, it takes about five minutes uh, before it gets a full coalescence happening. So you do have to plan these. So it's not like the replication is going to happen absolutely constantly, but they can happen. And we'll just go ahead and run it again. All right, so the backup was successful, and 
Now we can see that uh, it transferred about 1.9 gig. That's because it's looking at the block level. So it's seen, even though we created and deleted a file, it sees two gigs worth of changes at the block level. But still, you know, in this scenario, two gigs, maybe that's how much you have dumping to that VM on an hourly basis. So it still only takes a minute to back it up. So now let's do that worst case scenario thing where we uh, are, what are we doing here? RM-RF slash like that. B, uh, no. Oh, okay, we got to use no preserve to do that fail safe. So we'll uh, dash dash. So now we're going to really break it. We're going to go ahead and do this uh, RMRF no preserve and just, you know, whoops. We, uh, we kind of broke this. Oh, no, can't remove, can't remove. All right, what happens if we try to, let's reboot this. Let's see if we shut down. Oh, autocomplete doesn't work. Let's go ahead and, uh, mm, that's bad, right? <laughs> Back over to the VM. Uh, we'll go ahead and issue a restart for it. Let's go ahead and reboot it. Oh, failed to create. It won't even do that properly. Well, it looks like we're just going to have to uh, force shut down this VM. So we'll go ahead and get rid of it. And it's shut down. It's We know this VM is now quite well broken. So this is our poof. We broke that uh, particular VM. So now how do we start the other one? Go back over here to VMs. And reloops, rely on our continuous replication here. Matter of fact, we'll just go ahead and do this. We're going to remove it all together. So it's gone. You don't have it anymore. So then you get the call like, hey, we have a problem. Now, here's where you can either A, just force start it because, well, that other one's not coming back. It is, it is not just kind of gone. It's really, really gone. So we're going to go ahead and force start this one. We don't need to clone it or anything like that. And this is now our new main VM because, well, the other one we RMRF'd on, you know, uh, deliberate accident here. And while we're at it, we'll also, instead of calling it uh, replication, oh, on, there we go. Let's go ahead and get rid of this because now it's our primary and we'll delete that aspect of it. So it's now just called YouTube demo VM. So, all right. And also, by the way, um, even though it started on another VM, and because it's a duplicate with the same MAC address and everything, which is also one of the reasons you don't want to necessarily clone or anything like that, you want to start it and force start that, is when we go into it, it got the same IP address, even though it's set to be DHCP. And the reason why is because when you do these replications, it does clone the MAC address as well. LS, hey, look, there's that tom.txt file that we touched before. We are back up and running that quickly just by saying force start it and then we can then build the next uh, replication back to the other server after repair it or however you want to do it. So hopefully this gives you an idea of just easy ways you can do this. Uh, go ahead and cover one last little piece of it. When you do these continuous replications, which by the way, it is going to have an error because it can't find those, you can select multiple VMs to do this. So if you have the things that you think are critical that you want backed up on like an hourly schedule to another server, you can do this. And the only consideration we have is whether or not your hardware can handle it and what kind of load will this put on your server doing that. Those are definitely concerns, but continuous replication is a great way to keep that hot spare availability on a second server. Or maybe if the client wants them all normally backed up, except for one, they're like, yeah, we can't live without this. And for example, even for us, our phone system is really critical and it runs in here. So we have that, you know, set up easily and at the ready to be fired back up. So hopefully this is helpful and gives you an idea for uh, simple ways to set up backup and high availability with continuous replication and how it works. Uh, go ahead and play with it. It's, it's a great uh, tool. It's built into uh, Zen Orchestra. And as long as the two servers can talk to Zen Orchestra, Zen Orchestra can orchestrate this happening in a continuous replication. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more content from my channel, go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell icon and hopefully YouTube will send you a notice. If you're interested in contracting Lawrence Systems for any type of IT services work or consulting work, go ahead and head over to lawrencesystems.com and fill out our contact and get in touch with us. 
If you would like to help the channel out in other ways, you can use our affiliate links below in the description, or we have a link directly to our Lawrence Systems page where we have a list of different affiliate offers, and it's very appreciated if you use any of those for signing up any of the services, and many of them offer you discounts. If you want to head over to our forums, there'll be a link in the description for our forums, uh, wherever they may be, because we've been looking at different forum platforms, but they'll always be relevantly linked right there. All right, once again, thanks. Leave some feedback and comments below on this video. If you loved it, if you hated it, I try to reply to everyone, the people who hate and the people who love them. So thank you very much and see you next time.